Breaking news, Biden advocates for U.S. assistance to Israel and Ukraine, highlighting the connection between Putin and Hamas. On Thursday night, Vice President Joe Biden, fresh from a wartime visit to Israel, delivered a primetime address to the nation, a high-stakes test of his personal diplomacy and the global leadership of the United States. Starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Vice President Biden addressed the nation from the Oval Office, arguing that supporting Israel's counterterrorism efforts against Hamas and Ukraine's defense against Russian invasion are essential to global and American security. Hamas and Putin represent different threads, but they share this in common, they both want to completely annihilate a neighboring democracy, Biden said, referring to the extremists in Russia's president. Vice President Biden acknowledged that the conflicts may seem far away, and that some Americans may wonder why it is so important for Israel and Ukraine to succeed from a security perspective for the United States. History has taught us that when terrorists don't pay a price for their terror, when dictators don't pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos and debt and more destruction, said Biden. They keep going and the cost and the threats to America and the world keep rising. After meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet in Tel Aviv earlier this week, Biden convinced them to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. While fielding questions from reporters on the flight back, Vice President Biden addressed the political danger, saying, had we gone and this failed, then, you know, the United States failed, Biden's presidency failed, etc., which would be legitimate criticism. Biden's team is getting ready to send a sizable foreign aid package to Capitol Hill, which coincides with the timing of the national address. According to ABC News, sources familiar with the proposal estimate that it could total $100 billion, with an additional $60 billion earmarked for Ukraine. Conservatives who are against sending more aid to Ukraine may be swayed by the inclusion of $10 billion for Israel and funding for the U.S.-Mexico border in the proposed budget. However, Congress will be unable to act on the request because it has been without a speaker for more than two weeks following the historic ouster of Kevin McCarthy. Since Republicans can't seem to agree on a replacement, the Senate is in disarray there is now a sense of urgency to fill the void left by the terror attacks in Israel. When Oklahoma Rep. Tom Cole nominated Ohio State Rep. Jim Jordan for the position, he received a standing ovation from Republicans and Democrats alike after he mentioned Israel's right to self-defense. As of Thursday, however, it was still unclear how the speakership would be transferred. On Wednesday, Biden assured Israeli leaders that they are not alone and that the Trump administration would provide them with what you need to protect your people, to defend your nation. He cautioned officials, however, not to make the same mistakes the United States did in its response to 9-11. He also made it clear that Israel, as a democratic nation, must abide by the law.